All right, so this video is going to be a little bit different than most videos. I'm not out somewhere. I'm not talking about the FJ or the Scout. I'm talking about the Baja. And as you guys have seen in probably some of the past videos, I posted one about maybe two or three months ago about why I'm getting this thing. And if you haven't seen that, go click that right here. Go watch that. I also posted a video about three weeks ago, I believe, about putting the lift in, and that's been done for a little bit now. But I'm going to give you guys an update of where I'm at now on the car. There's a lot that has changed. Maybe not noticeable stuff. I mean, once you see it, you'll notice it. But it's not like it's like crazy noticeable. So I'm gonna get into that right now. All right, and how this is gonna work is I'm gonna start from the back and go to the front and show you what I'm working on right now, what is finished, and what my plans are for this thing. And if you saw the first video, you'll see behind me in that video was this thing, obviously, with the rear side panels off and there were big holes of rust. And so as you can see, I'll show you right now, I'm working on patching that. So I am not a welder. This is actually my first time welding. So yeah, the welds aren't that great. The fabrication isn't that great. I actually have more to do on these panels because as you can see, they're very bumpy. Nobody's actually gonna see it, but I wanna make sure that it's done right the first time. But today I just finished kind of like grinding off the welds and painting it. And obviously I'm gonna seam seal it and stuff. I got a lot more to do on that, but that's done. And so the reason I actually was able to buy this thing was the guy bought it and then realized that the dude before him put Bondo in the cross member and it was falling apart and it didn't pass inspection. So that was actually one of the first things to go even before the lift was done. Uh, the cross member, new cross member was put in. That's kind of like where there's like subframes attached to it and everything, not the direct subframe, but pieces of it are. And everything down there was fixed with the rust. And then I moved on to these panels and then the only rust I have to fix yet would be for the gas tank, the straps or the attachments for the gas tank they're rusted out and there's another cross member that's rusted out. So I got to fix that yet. So that's going to be a pain. So for that, I'll probably have to drop the gas tank and repair that, which I don't think will be too bad. Not as bad as what's going on out here. Cause I still have more to do. And it's taking me a lot of time for this. Um, also because it's the first time I've done this. So, but I want to make sure it's at least done in a decent way. So that's why I'm kind of trying to take my time on it. But besides that, and it's the same for both sides, like both sides were terrible. If you didn't see that in the video, it's, it's pretty bad. So I put the lift in, right? You guys already saw that. And just recently I got my KYB struts in and King Springs. And the reason I chose KYB struts is I've, is everybody that has a Baja that I've been talking to that has lifted it, they put the, they've put the KYB in and they've been super happy with it. So I did some research on them and I think they'll be a pretty good fit and I'm excited to try them out. So the rear is in right now and for the king springs they don't actually make any for the 05 baja or i should say the 04 through the 06 baja but they do actually make king springs for the 03 baja which the springs are totally different it's actually an inch lower normally the springs are at least for the 03 baja which is kind of weird but they make a 1.1 inch lift for the 03 baja so i end up going with that so technically it gives me a 0.1 inch lift which is basically nothing so i put those on the other night in the back and they worked out really well. I'm really happy with them as you can see here. So it's kind of nice to have clean springs in the back. Um, and obviously all this junk in here, I want to put Rhino liner in. So I'm gonna have to kind of, you know, get rid of all that junk in here. And also these arms are rusty and everything's structurally fine. Everything's fine back here, but those need to get done yet. And, uh, and these calibers are gonna be red all the way around. Now I'm still debating if I want to get new calipers or not, they all seem to be in good shape, but I would also like to see everything kind of get replaced. That way it's more reliable, but I think I might stick with these for now see what they do. And obviously it's going to be a while until it's like fully on the road. So I think I'll probably stick with these for now. The last thing for the back also has to do with the brakes. There's a brake hose down here, as you can see. Now, obviously it's jacked up, so it's hanging more, but there is tension on it. And this could be the limit of the travel, obviously with the lift because it's already all the way down. But I don't really like that, so I might be trying to find longer hoses just for that because I don't really want all that tension on an old hose like that because, you know, I don't really want to lose brakes. But besides that, in the back, that's kind of it. I mean, the whole bed is ripped apart. As you can hopefully see back there, there's a blanket with a whole bunch of stuff underneath it. But I'm gonna leave it like that because I'm prepping it for paint soon once all this is done, so that's gonna stay apart. Um, otherwise, Interior, the front is 
mostly intact, but the rear here is kind of a mess. I tore everything apart because it was kind of dirty in here and I wanted to, you know, do a deep clean. So obviously I'm gonna wait for the deep clean, but this is kind of my parts area. And as you can see, the headliner is also down uh, in the back. It's, it is a little bit up there too, mostly in the back. That's because I took the roof racks off because those are gonna be prepped for paint. They're gonna be a gloss black. And I guess I can just tell you guys this now, the color that I wanna go for originally, I wanna go for matte and or gray. Um, and first of all, matte, the reason I'm choosing matte, yes, matte is such a pain when it comes to, if you scuff it, you can't buff it because then it's gonna be shiny and it's gonna be gloss. But so that is a pain, but I love gloss. My dad's scout over here is actually matte. Um, and right now, sorry, quick update on this thing. This thing's getting a, a new leaf springs and new shocks. And technically the leaf springs are like a one inch lift. So, but yeah, that's cool. Anyways, matte. And my personal car is a blue car. It's matte, uh, custom paint. Obviously I did it about, a, I wanna say a year and a half, two years ago. So I love matte. I just love the way it looks. Uh, it's just clean. And at this point it's like, why wrap it? Cause I already need to repaint everything. So I'm just going to repaint it in a matte green. And no, it's not gonna be like this shiny lime green or like this weird green. It's gonna be kind of like my dad's scout. It's kind of like a darkish green, but I want some like gold flakes in it. A little bit lighter than that. Um, I'll throw a picture up here of what I want it to look like. So that's ultimately the green that I'm going for. I'm really excited to try it. I have some cans over there of paint that was custom mixed and I wanna see what it looks like. And I'll go from there to see if I actually go for that color, but I'm excited to try that out. So interior torn apart, everything's apart. Up front here, fenders are gone. Um, there was a lot of rust in this area, so I sandblasted it and I just primed it. So they're kind of almost ready for paint. I got some dent repair to do with those. Um, up front as well, obviously lift is in. And what I'm working on right now, which was I was actually working on tonight, is putting the KYB struts in, the King Springs, so I'm excited to get those in, but sadly I had to stop because I want to get a new uh, bump stop here. If this focuses, it's kind of all cracked and nasty and I don't really want to do that. So I have to get a new one of those. As far as the engine goes, this is a stock 2.5 turbo and it's actually not in terrible shape. Now I had it checked out after the lift video and the, the guy did a compression test on it and I just want to get his opinion on what it was like. And there's one cylinder that compression's a little bit low, but it's not low enough to like warrant anything. So I gotta keep my eye on that. But it is a 200,000 mile engine. So I don't know how I feel about it because part of me is saying that it's gonna blow up, another part of me is saying that it's gonna last forever. But when it does blow up, or maybe in two or three years, I wanna do an STI swap on this thing because I love this engine, but I kinda wanna put more boost in it. And I don't really trust it right now. So that's that. And also, uh, CV axle, obviously with the lift, there is a lot of change in geometry there. It's kind of sagging down, maybe at like a 20, 25 degree angle, maybe 30. So I found a solution for those, which I'm actually gonna talk about in a later video about why I think these new ones should work and they obviously allow for more travel, but there's a lot that goes into that and I'll kind of dive into that later with with how this lift works, it's kind of confusing because you feel like you need more travel. Anyways, I'm gonna get into it in another video with that. So as far as timeline of where I'm at, right now, like I said, obviously I'm putting new struts in and I gotta put a new CV axle in. But after that, guys, and once this rust is fixed on the bottom, which that may take a little bit longer than I think it will, um, it's ready for paint. So there's a lot of body work I do. No, there's a lot of body work I have to do on this thing. Um, obviously, like I was saying, fenders, they got some dents in them. Hood has like this weird long dent. And obviously there's a lot of stuff like that, if you guys can see that, and just like scuffs and stuff, which the scuffs aren't gonna be hard. But there's a lot of small stuff that I have to take care of. And I'm excited to actually do that, but I enjoy doing that. I think it'll be fun, cause then I'll get to see, you know, what this car looks like. All right, and actually, quick side note here. Um, I got the tires in. Now I actually put the tires and rims down at the house, cause it's dusty and dirty up here, but I kept one up here because I actually have to fit it uh, on the front. I'm not sure if it's gonna rub because I also want to space them out a little bit. So right now I think it's a 10 offset, 
Um, it's Rika or Rika rims. I don't know how you say it. But I found these guys because I was looking at Method rims first. And honestly, I think Method's a little overrated. I like Method, don't get me wrong. I think they look dope. And they get a lot of love in the rally community. But Rika or Rika, whatever you say, kind of the same thing. Um, right now, they're a little dusty. But here they are. I personally love these things. I got them in yesterday. And or I should say I got the tires in yesterday. And I got them fitted. But the rims I got in probably two weeks ago and I put them on the car, I love them. I put this tire on the car. I think it's gonna look great. These are BF Goodrich All Terrains KO2s. And right now I'm running 215, 75 R15. Um, so that equals about a 27.7 inch tire. And the stock tires were, I wanna say 26 point, oh, I was just looking at this yesterday. I wanna say it's like three or maybe five, something like that. So it's not too much bigger, but it's a little bit bigger because I put the stock tires on um, after the lift and it looked horrendous, which I knew. I was expecting to get bigger tires. So I'm really happy with those tires. But that's the other thing before I start painting actually is I have to figure out if they rub or not. Obviously back is fine, but up front might be an issue. Uh, I noticed this soon after I got it, there is rub right here, but it's only on this side. So I'm not sure, I haven't, I never actually felt the rub. So I'm not sure what happened there or how that happened. Cause it's not, it didn't rub with the tires that I was running on the way home at least. So I'm hoping they don't rub because if they don't, I want to space them out maybe another inch and that's going to look dope. I don't care if the tires aren't like that big because this thing is not a rock crawler. It's, it's basically just doing some like light trails for camping. That's what this thing is going to be made for. So I'm not worried about like too much ground clearance. I want ground clearance, but I don't, it doesn't need to be crazy because I still want to drive sort of like a car, but I do love the look of spaced out wheels, especially on like off-road vehicles. Makes it look squatty and I love that. Not squatted, but you know what I mean, yeah. And obviously there's a whole bunch of other small stuff that I need to do with this thing that I'm not even gonna mention because I can't think of them right now, but there's a lot more, you know, minute details that don't matter. The one thing is though that I'm really excited about is I want to manufacture a roof rack or a roof basket, I guess I should say, that goes along the whole length, even back to the bed. So then with this roof rack here, where it's going to be, you know, I'm gonna have supports right here, obviously. And where I have those, I wanna have places to put like fuel cans or jerry cans and max tracks and just storage like that. So that's kind of the main thing. And then in this bed, which I'm not gonna open up and show you for obvious reasons, uh, I want to build like a drawer system, you know, with like a little deck and drawers you can pull out, put stuff in it or whatever. And then I also want to put a lights, obviously, on the roof rack. Uh, Diode Dynamics makes a really cool light bar. I honestly forget what it's called. It doesn't look like a typical light bar because honestly, guys, I hate how typical light bars look. It's just a solid piece of bar and it, it doesn't look that great in my opinion. So I want to do something different. Originally, I was thinking Baja lights and I still might do that but I'm not 100% sure yet. And then basically how it's gonna work is I'm gonna take my current battery up front, put that in the back, run a wire from the alternator to it, and have like a switch in my car to, so I can charge it from the alternator when it's running, and that way it only draws from this thing. Um, or I guess I should say the lights will only draw from that thing, from, from the battery in the back. My plan is to have all forward-facing lights only run off the front battery, you know, like usual. But then all these lights back here, I'm gonna have the ability to use when the car's not running and not worry about draining that battery. So I'm gonna have a little switch and I can just turn them on and off back here or in the car, I should say. And I think that would be pretty dope. And I guess the last thing is, is I kind of figured out the tent I wanna get for it. It's gonna be a Roman Adventure Co. tent. I'll get into that in a separate video, but I am super excited to get this thing on the road and drive it. Even if it's not fully done, I just wanna get painted, get all the bottom end stuff done and drive it for a little bit as I'm working on stuff. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Um, I have a lot more content coming, not just on the Baja, obviously on the FJ and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of stuff planned. And if you have any suggestions, put it in the comments below. And also, I was looking at my analytics the other day, and uh, only like 3% of you are actually subscribed who watch my videos. So hit the subscribe button, support me. I have a lot more videos coming. For the past like three months, I have been doing weekly. Um, Recently, it's probably been three to four times a month, only because I've been trying to put as much time as I can into this thing because I want to get this thing done. But this summer, I'm hoping to get weekly again, and I'm super excited to share content with you guys. And anyways, I'll see you in the next one.